At least six journalists have been killed in Ukraine since the start of Russia's invasion. That's according to the Committee to Protect Journalists. One person has also been reported missing. There are growing calls for both Russian and Ukrainian authorities to ensure journalists are not targeted while reporting on the ground. Rob Mahoney is the executive director for the Committee to Protect Journalists, and he joins me now for more. Um, Rob, thanks very much for being with us. Um, what is it that you're hearing from journalists in Ukraine about the current conditions on the ground? What are their biggest concerns? Well, the biggest concerns uh, immediately are the brutal tactics of the Russian army, as your report just shows, which is to pound um, civilian areas, hit civilian targets. Journalists are civilians, so um, they themselves have come under fire. Uh, we believe up to seven have been killed, most of them in the Kiev area, and they have been the... Uh, the, the targets of uh, sniping or of shelling. That, that's one of the big uh, fears that the journalists have. And those veteran journalists that have covered Russia's wars before, whether in Syria or in Chechnya, in the Caucasus, know exactly what to expect. That there will be absolutely no regard paid for, for journalists and for them doing their job. And the other thing that we, we've noticed, and which you mentioned, which is uh, for Ukrainian journalists who have gone missing, uh, we've had two who went missing who then subsequently uh, were, were set free, but they were lured to meetings where they were grabbed by Russian uh, soldiers and held and tortured for more than a week. So uh, you, have, um, you have the problems of uh, crossfire and the shelling, and you have the problems of deliberate targeting, particularly of Ukrainian journalists. And, you know, journalists, of course, try to travel to those regions to bear witness um, where front lines are often shifting. Can you talk a bit more about those kinds of specific risks and challenges that reporters encounter when they're in a war zone like this? Yeah, well, the thing is that, as you say, um, you know, positions shift. You don't know from one minute to the next where uh, the uh, the front line might be in certain parts of Ukraine. Um, Ukrainian journalists are fighting in their own homeland. Some of them are not uh, trained uh, conflict reporters. Mm -hmm. Some are, but most aren't. And one of the things that they're saying to, to us at the Committee to Protect Journalists is that they need uh, hostile environment training, they need body armor, they need uh, protective equipment. And we and other groups are trying our best to get that to them. But that, in the end, is, 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 is just a small uh, part of the problem. The, the biggest problem, uh, part of the problem, as I said at the beginning, is the Russian tactics themselves, where journalists are, are not uh, protected and allowed to do their job. They're not embedded with, uh, very few are embedded with the Ukrainian forces, so they are, are at the, uh, the mercy of um, of uh, Russians when they're on the road traveling to fighting or coming back. And as I say, seven have already been killed in the first six weeks of this conflict. Can you talk a bit more, Rob, just about the broader role that journalists play, particularly in a conflict like this, where we know that it's not just misinformation, it's disinformation as well, that is being essentially um, weaponized to try and galvanize uh, support for or against a particular side. Um, and also, what can be done now, given that terrain that you just laid out, to try to protect journalists as they try to gather information and bear witness to what's happening? in Ukraine. Well, the role of independent journalists has never been uh, more important. As you say, we have a, a war of misinformation. Let's just call it what it is, which is lying. Um, the, uh, the Russian attempts today to wash away the, uh, the pictures that you just showed of civilian casualties up to 400, as if that was staged by the Ukrainians and that this was a, a false flag operation. Well, one of the ways that we can find the truth is by having independent journalists going to those sites, interviewing people who are witnesses, photographing and filming uh, what they see 
that's an essential part of, uh, of uh, war reporting anywhere, but it's now even more important because of the disinformation coming from um, the Russian side. And in terms of protecting journalists more, the, the biggest thing that we can do is, uh, at the moment, is to get the training for those that don't have it on the Ukrainian side, to get them the protective equipment that they need to keep themselves uh, safe, and above all, to keep up the international pressure on Russia to respect journalists as civilians and to make sure that they are not targeted simply because they are doing reporting jobs. All right, Rob Mahoney with the Committee to Protect Journalists. The world is certainly watching because of the work that these journalists are doing. Rob, thank you very much. Thank you.